Hi, I'm Soleiman. I'm an AWS Cloud Engineer and I hold the following AWS certifications. The Cloud Practitioner Foundational, Solution Architect Associate and Solution Architect Professional. Therefore, in today's video, I'm going to share my experiences and tips for a beginner's guide to passing the AWS Solution Architect Associate exam. And by the way, I use the exact same steps to also pass my AWS Solution Architect Professional exam certification. Now, I'm going to be very honest. I hate taking exams and I hate even more preparing for them. And I've never been good at taking exams when I was at school, but I have learned certain exam study tips that have helped me pass my AWS exams that are proven to work, which I'm going to share with you today for free. I'm going to cover five key questions. Firstly, what is the AWS Solution Architect Associate exam? Next, we'll look at how much experience do you need to take the exam and prepare for the exam. We'll also dive into the exam structure, what you should study for the exam, and finally, how you actually know know when you're ready to take the exam. And as a bonus, I'm going to share my revision hacks that help me prepare and pass the Solution Architect Associate exam. So what is the AWS Solution Architect Associate exam? Now this exam validates your expertise in designing distributed systems on AWS. It covers various aspects of AWS architecture, including design of scalable fault tolerant systems, the implementation of best practices for AWS architecture, and the estimation of AWS costs and defining cost control mechanisms. You can take this exam in various languages, including English, Japanese, Korean, Chinese, and I've actually taken all my AWS exams in Korean. Now, there are some key areas that the exam actually focuses on. Firstly, we've got design resilient architectures. This includes knowledge about multi-tier applications, high availability, fault tolerance, and disaster recovery. Secondly, we've got defined performance architectures. This includes concepts around elastic scalability, caching solutions, and storage performance optimization are also evaluated. Thirdly, we've got specified secure applications and architectures. This is where you are tested on your knowledge of AWS security features, secure application tiers, and IAM configurations. Next, we also have design cost optimized architectures. This emphasizes designing cost efficient storage solutions, architectures, and network design. We also have defined operationally excellent architecture. This is about having knowledge about auto scaling, monitoring, Monitoring, logging solutions, and infrastructure as code. Now, this exam is suitable for people from different backgrounds and experiences, such as solution architects, developers, sysop admins, IT professionals. And this exam is actually the right exam to take following on your cloud practitioner foundational exam. So next up, how much experience should you have before taking this solution architect associate exam? This exam is actually designed for individuals who already have some experience designing distributed systems on AWS. However, the exact amount of experience required can vary based on several factors, including your background, prior knowledge, and study habits. AWS recommends the following experience for people preparing for these exams. Firstly, we have hands-on experience. AWS recommends at least one year of hands-on experience designing available, cost-efficient, fault-tolerant, and scalable distributed systems on AWS. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to be working full-time on AWS projects for a year, but you should have a decent or comprehensive experience covering the key services and architectural best practices. Secondly, knowledge of AWS services. AWS recommends a solid understanding of various AWS services and how they interact. This includes knowledge of services related to compute, storage, databases, networking, security, and more. Thirdly, architectural design. You should have experience in using architectural design principles based on customer requirements to provide implementation guidance based on best practices, such as using the AWS well-architected framework. Now, from my experience, I don't think you need one year of experience with AWS. If you prepare correctly and take this exam with knowledge of AWS core services, you should be able to pass this exam within three to four weeks. However, you do want to learn things the right way and learn things properly instead of rushing through the content just to have the badge on your LinkedIn profile. Next question we're going to cover is the exam structure. Now, this exam consists of 65 multiple choice and multiple response questions. You have 130 minutes to complete this exam and this exam will cost you 150 US dollars. You can take your exam either at home or in test centers. I've taken all my exams at home because it's just a lot more comfortable and easier for me to focus. 
focus. Now, how this exam works is that it's made out of four domains, each having a specific weighted percentage, making up 100% of the exam. Now, domain one is design secure architectures, which is about 30%. Domain two is design resilient architectures, which is 26%. Domain three is design high performing architectures, which is 24%. And finally, domain four, is design cost optimized architectures, which is 20%. I will link the full exam guide below in this video description so you can see the full breakdown of each domain and the topics that you need to learn. Now let's move on to question number four, how to prepare for the AWS Solution Architect Associate exam. And as I mentioned at the start of this video, preparing for this exam was stressful for me because I'm not a fan of studying and I need to keep things fun to stay focused. I've always had to develop strategies to make learning engaging, competitive, and almost interlocking a game, which is how I've managed to get through these exams and AWS certifications. Now, when I first started taking AWS exams, I took in-depth and detailed notes, but this didn't suit my learning style or time management. Now, quick disclaimer, everyone has different ways of learning, so it's important to figure out how you learn best and then rinse and repeat the same process for each exam. Since I also have a full-time job, I have two YouTube channels, I needed a time-efficient approach. Now, what I always do is I go through the video resources on Udemy, YouTube, take notes and then take practice papers to see where I am. Now with most practice papers it tells you your domains of strengths and domains of improvements. I don't want to say weakness because it sounds a little bit sad and then I focus on the topics where I'm slightly weak at. For example I might be strong in domain one which is design secure architectures and bad at domain four which is design cost optimized architectures. This is where I turn my attention to domain four, the services, the best practices in order to improve in this area. Now, I also use a number of different resources. Firstly, Stefan Marek's Solution Architect Associate course, because Stefan's AWS courses are one of the most popular courses within the cloud space. And you can grab his course on Udemy for $10. The next resource I use is YouTube. YouTube is a content goldmine, and there are plenty of videos about AWS on YouTube. If you want something more in depth, then I suggest looking at Adrian Cantrell's AWS courses. By using these resources and focus on keeping the learning process engaging, I was able to prepare effectively for this exam. For practice papers, I suggest using tutorials dojos because these practice papers are a little bit harder than the actual exam, which means if you get a good score in the practice papers with tutorials dojos, that means that you'll be actually way better off in the actual exam. So if you get 60 to 70% in your practice papers on tutorials dojos, then I suggest you're definitely ready to take and sit your AWS exam. Now, my study and revision hacks consist of watching the online video course, summarizing services and key points, focusing on my weaknesses and creating spider diagrams. Once I've done all this, I shift my focus to active recall and research shows that actively retrieving information from your brain is one of the most effective ways to learn. To make the most of the active recall stage and identify areas where you need to focus your learning, follow these exam tips. Firstly, start by going through the course content using Udemy, YouTube, or Adrian's resources. Secondly, take your notes, summarize them, make sketches and diagrams or whichever study technique that works best for you. Thirdly, then start taking your mock exams to understand where you are and identify your knowledge gaps. Next, you want to answer every question on the mock exam to the best of your ability. If you're unsure about an answer or the other options, then mark those questions for review. This will help you identify the areas where you need to focus your learning on. Next up, after after completing the mock, review your score. Don't be discouraged if it's lower than you expected. The score is just your starting point and will help you gauge your current understanding of the material. Finally, use your practice test results to identify the areas where you need to improve. Focus on learning and relearning the materials in those areas. This targeted approach will help you make the most of your study time and ensure you're fully prepared for the actual exam. Now, it is likely that you might already have AWS experience, which means that you already know a big part of this exam. So you should focus on the areas that you don't know. Remember, it's essential to have a growth mindset and understand that your initial score is just a starting point. With consistent effort and targeted learning, you'll see improvement and be well on your way to passing the AWS Solution Architect Associate exam. Good luck on your exam. Remember to book it if you haven't done so. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.